Surame in the granite belt we have three vineyards uh, from where all of our fruit comes from. Uh, the main one is called Seven Scenes and that has uh, a lot of red on it and our sort of super premium Chardonnay uh, which is around about 50 hectares. There, then there's two others which are about sort of five, six kilometres away. Different angles, different soils, uh, different varieties. There's a lot more whites on those two. Uh, they're about 22 hectares each. And all three vineyards give us around about 600 tonnes of grapes over a period of sort of late January, February, March, and can go into April. We bring all the fruit down via uh, refrigerated trucks. We pick during the night because it's cooler. We take about 40 minutes to get the fruit into the hopper and about half an hour to crush the fruit. So they, they started picking about 4.30 yesterday afternoon and went to about nine o'clock. They loaded the truck and then the truck drives four hours and gets here at about 5.30 in the morning and we get here at seven and start. We try and sort of get fruit pretty much within that 12 hour period. Because when you pick fruit, it's just like, the best way I can give you an example is when you pick an apple, you know, you bite an apple and you leave it there for 10, 15 seconds and it goes brown. So once you, you expose the, the outer flesh of the berries or any fruit, you will get what we call oxidation uh, developing. And once you get oxidation developing, you start to get loss of fruit flavours. So we try and chill it. We add a little bit of sulphur in the vineyard and get it to us as much fast as possible. And then when we crush it, we're chilling it again. And currently it's you know, sitting around about 12 degrees. the weather, um, like at the moment, I watch the weather a lot. Um, I look at three different websites uh, and it's really important because, well first of all you can't be a, a procrastinator when you're a winemaker, you've really got to look at it and go, yep, make a decision and stick to it. Um, the hardest thing is is knowing when to pick, uh, but, but it's based off flavour and, and analysis. Uh, so when we, we do make those decisions, I pick it and I live with it. I don't go, oh, I wish I would have, you know. I don't do that because when I pick with it, I'm, I'm happy. I've made that decision, move on and stick with it and make the best wine you can. So we, we can be influenced a little bit by the, you know, the moon or the tides and stuff like that because plants do respond according to the full moon or the half moon and, and also the influence of the tide. So, that's got a little bit to do with it, so we're starting to look into a little bit more of that sort of biodynamic um, influence to help sort of increase flavours and, and, uh, and good flavour development. Because at the end of the day, a consumer wants to taste a product that is flavour, not just sweet or artificial. They want to taste flavour, and flavour is dry flavours. And, um, and that starts out in the vineyard and that's if we have a week of rain well that makes an impact on what I do as a winemaker so it's really important that we, we pick on good weather and at the moment uh, today's Thursday I've got pretty good weather until about Tuesday Wednesday next week um, that's as much as you can sort of gamble on so another three four days then have a look so I'm sort of only really working about five days out at this stage yeah. Um, this year's been pretty good as far as um, growing conditions. We, we, uh, we talk about growing seasons, which is uh, about September, uh, we get bud bursts, so that's September, October, November, and as the vine grows, those sort of first three months were being quite cool, which was good. And then uh, November, December, and January, we had a little bit of extra heat, a uh, nice little bit of rain. So we have had a pretty good season so far in the vineyards and now we're reaping the benefits of condition of fruit, uh, flavours are good, sugars are good, um, acidities are still good and um, so yeah I think so far, but now yeah, touch wood, uh, 2016 is looking pretty good at the moment so yeah. Well, currently we're going through uh, what we call vintage. Uh, it's is when we take the grapes, the grapes are, are ready, the flavours are ripe, uh, the weather's been pretty good to us, and uh, this happens once a year for around about three months. And that's where we, we decide when we pick uh, certain flavours for certain varieties. 
uh, and when they're ready, we bring them in and uh, the process that you saw this morning uh, is the crushing and the pressing of those grapes. And that happens about every sort of second or third day over a period of about three months. I suppose for, um, for those people who would like to know a little bit more about you know, why making what happens on a what we call a common sense approach. Uh, first of all, we do uh, WCT uh, courses here for the public, um, for uh, restaurateurs or wine lovers or sommeliers, whatever it may be. And that's done in a systematic way of, uh, of approach of making it uh, user friendly, but uh, quite sort of worldwide knowledge. So first of all, we do those. Uh, people can come here and obviously do a tour. Uh, we don't really let them in the winery at, at this time due to a lot of danger and stuff, but um, certainly our staff are, are very well educated at, in, in cellar door. I think people have got this stigma or idea that um, certain grape varieties or wines are sweeter than other um, by variety and that's not correct. So all varieties are ripened by the sun. Um, and it's the winemaker of when they pick it and it's up to the winemaker of how much uh, sugar, if any, is left in the wines, um, whether they have oak, uh, what sort of yeast they've done, uh, even right down to the colour and the blends and so on. So we do control a whole lot of aspects of that. Uh, but the purity of what I suppose the consumer here is that, um, you know, um, oh, I smell roses and violets and it must be from the west side of the hill. Unfortunately, yeah, that's probably true. So um, for people wanting to understand that kind of stuff, I suppose, you know, for me, I, you know, 17 years here of understanding the weather and the climate and the soil. And when I walk over the vineyard and I smell a different smell in the vineyard, um, I notice that. And, you know, I then try and look it around. Where is that coming from? Is it the wind blowing across some different trees and it's blowing the wattle flowers into there? And it sounds strange, but that Chardonnay might pick up or the Pinot might pick up some of those flavours. Um, and I think people don't really comprehend that, but they do if you go and sit there and have a, go camping, you have a bushfire, or sorry, a fire, what happens? All your clothes and all the camp gear smells of smoke. So smoke or, or anything strong flavours will permeate skin, flesh, fruit and so on. So you do get some regional flavours that uh, is unique to the Granite Belt. Um, and that's got a lot to do with the elevation. Uh, we're quite high up there. Some of the highest in Australia, uh, we're in that, that sort of 800, 900 metres, and that impacts the flavours. Um, and that's what makes it different. You know, if you're growing Chardonnay at 850 metres in the granite belt and growing Chardonnay, the same clone in, you know, Adelaide Hills, uh, they're about 450 metres. The difference of that 450 odd metres uh, will impact the, the different flavours, what happens in that Chardonnay. And that's the same for all other regions and all other varieties. So it's really about, you know, the soil, the climate, the elevation, the winemaker's attitude, um, and just how they process. You know, you saw we're very clean of what we do. You know, we're quick and fast and, and get it clean, get it into the tank, and now we'll spend some time evaluating the juice matching up what sort of yeast we want to put in there and so on. So first of all, this morning, seven o'clock, we had our grapes uh, being opened with the doors on the truck. And that was around about seven o'clock this morning and there was about 22 bins of Pinot Gris from uh, St Jude's Vineyard. Came down from the vineyard overnight around, around about a four hour trip. And we use uh, two forklifts uh, to get all of those grapes out and we put them into the hopper straight away. That usually takes around about 40 minutes to get them out of the truck, uh, into the hopper and wash all the bins and then put them back in. So uh, the next stage is uh, when we started to lift that big stainless steel hopper that had about 20 tonnes of Pinot Gris in there and we lift that so then all the juice and the fruit can go into the top of the crusher. And the crusher is where we, we take the juice out um, goes into the pump underneath it and the berries go through sort of like rollers so the berry goes down and it just sort of gently sort of breaks them and squeeze them and you don't want to damage the seeds too much uh, you don't want to damage the, the skins because otherwise they become bitter and it's like adding a green capsicum character to white fruit juice. It's not a nice character. So we eliminate the bitterness of the skins and the seeds and we, we crush them. We then chill the juice and that goes up to the press. Press once we get the chilled must, which is the juice and the berries together, 
they go inside a big 15,000 litre tank on the side. Uh, it's a press. It's a bit like a spaghetti strainer, except we put the grapes in there. We want to keep the juice and the inside the press is, it leaves us, uh, the berries there and we collect the juice as it runs off into a tank. Over a period of uh, where we're crushing, chilling and we're filling the press and we're draining the juice as it's coming out. Uh, that takes around about that sort of 40 minutes and then we're putting that juice into a cold tank as well uh, where we uh, chill the juice down to about 10 to 12 degrees overnight. Then I instruct Jessica to go and take a sample and she gives me all the analysis of that juice and then I'm tasting the berries, I'm tasting the, the juice uh, all in the process and, um, and that way I've got a preconceived idea and then when I get the analysis then I can make some uh, sort of uh, direction of what I want to do, whether I want to press harder or whether I want to separate the pressings or whether I want to add some acid or, and so on. So. The pressings of the Pinot Gris, uh, after about uh, one and a half hours of crushing all the little berries, um, you can see quite closely there that the, um, all the juice is gone and um, yeah, the juice is in the tank and we now take this down for our worm farm, which is part of our environmental aspects. So um, yeah, we create our own worm farm and they eat these eventually. So.